Hello and welcome to Simply Sport with me Niraj Prabhu. Adversity can be seen as an opportunity and that is exactly what Dempo Group Chairman Srinivas Dempo is planning to do for the relegated Dempo Sports Club. The five-time National League champions will fight in the second division I-League next season but the club will be focused more on producing excellent footballers, says Srinivas. Although he's sad about the relegation, Srinivas is keen to put the cash loss project behind him and look forward to a business model in the near future. I caught up with Mr. Srinivas Dempo a day after Dempo Sports Club were relegated from the I-League. After dominating almost a decade, uh, whereby, wherein they won the five uh, National League titles, Dempo Sports Club have uh, recently been relegated at the end of the 2015 season. That means uh, we will not see the Golden Eagles in action in the top flight Indian football, at least for uh, the next season. I have with me the uh, chairman of Dempo Group and the president of Dempo Sports Club. Uh, Baba, uh, what do you think went wrong for your club this season? I think, uh, first of all, it's a big disappointment for all of us, uh, for our fans particularly and for us that we will, we'll, won't be part of the coveted I-League next year. I think a uh, few things went wrong, uh, actually. One is there's no excuse. We have to take responsibility and say that, yes, all of us failed. And it's a good lesson for all of us so that now we will work with extra vigor to come back to the I-League. I think series of injuries which took a toll on some of our... If you look on paper, we had the best lineup, but it took serious toll uh, you know, continuous play uh, during the ISL and after that Federation Cup and the rest took a serious toll on the health of some of the and there was spate of injuries mm -hmm. right from you name Narayan Das who got injured during ISL, Pranay Haldar who got injured during an India Cup match, uh, India match, international match in South Korea, uh, to Amiri who got injured recently, to Tolge who was injured. I mean, you know, there were matches where we barely played with even one foreigner. Right. So that was the state of affairs. So anyway, I would say uh, bad luck with a misjudgment about our forward lineup capabilities. I think with one Tolge gone, we had no scorer. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's a mistake from our end. And the third factor I would say is uh, the change in coach during the season, because it does affect a team morally. I'm. Uh, Trevor did a fine job uh, after coming back and analyzing the whole thing, but it takes time and we were in the heat of the uh, right. I-League uh, during that time and facing some of the most uh, difficult teams, so it did take a toll. And, uh, scoring opportunities were many, but the ball was just not going in. So. Right. Uh, looking at uh, the last uh, couple of seasons, uh, I think in 2011-12 uh, was the last season that you all won the title and then uh, thereafter you finished uh, fifth and then fourth in the subsequent seasons. So, uh, but uh, the overall these two seasons saw a lot of changes in playing personnel, even the uh, coaching uh, uh, side uh, changed a lot. Do you think there was some uh, destabilization or uh, the lack of stability uh, was an issue? Uh, could be. I mean, a uh, couple of fans that gave me the feedback said that the changes happened too fast. Uh, changes were desired because if you see during uh, Mr. Arman Kulaso's time, as he exited, uh, the average age of our players were anywhere between 28 to 30, which is very, very high in, in Indian football, in, in the football, uh, sport of football. Mm -hmm. And we tried to get it down to like 25, 26 over the last two years which is actually good for football but you know probably the changes were so fast that the whole thing got a little bit destabilized and as you said you know success was not ours in the last two to three years so could be one factor that you know one lesson for us to learn is that changes should come gradually and not fast uh, do you, uh, did you have uh, total faith in Arthur Papas that he was the right man for the job and when he left, uh, did you regret a lot that he has not finished uh, his job? I mean, uh, of course regrets were there that he left halfway. I, I never like to part with my people halfway. I think, uh, you know, whether he's done a positive or negative thing can be judged seriously after one year of, you know, a complete season. And I think a couple of good things that he did was, as I said, he took younger players. Uh, some of the best stars that we have in Dempo Sports Club today are his handpick, like Pranay Haldar, yeah. Narayan Das, you know. So these are the positives. Uh, but however, uh, you know, leaving midway, yes, destabilized the team uh, to a certain extent. And, you know, that took a toll. One of the factors, mm -hmm. 
that took a toll on the team. So I do have regrets that uh, he left halfway. But at the same time, uh, you know, we can't forget good things that a coach does. Mm -hmm. And I always like to see the positive side in people, whether it's Mr. Arman Kulaso, whether it's Atar Papas, you know, they've all made contributions to the team. And yes, uh, you know, there were failures and right from Mr. Papas to myself to all of us, we have to assume responsibilities that we failed, uh, you know, as a team and we failed to our supporters and spectators who love us so much. Uh, Romeo Fernandez, it's a curious case uh, that uh, you all allowed him to leave for a loan deal to Brazil and uh, when he was uh, the stellar performer, the man of the tournament in the Federation Cup that you all uh, made the finals. Now looking back, do you think that was a decision that uh, could have been, uh, you know, you could have kept him and uh, put him in the, uh, in the I-League, made him the main man in your I-League squad? Uh, I always look at long-term development more versus immediate benefit. If uh, if I had to answer your question straight away, yes, I mean, Romeo could have been a positive addition to the team during a crucial time like what we faced over the last couple of months. But uh, I had hoped that, you know, he being in Brazil for the next one or two years could probably do a lot of good things to him because he has the potential. And when Zico uh, requested me uh, saying that, you know, he has the potential to become a good international player, I always have a lot of respect when somebody like Zico says that. And I said that, let's make a trial. And you know, I know it was a risk. So I called his parents. His mother was very, very supportive. And she said, yes, I would like my son to go. Uh, unfortunately, he's back. But yeah. uh, you know, the intent was always that he should have gone there and pursued his education, football educational career. And yes, if it meant sacrifice for Dempo Sports Club for a short term, yes, it, it was a sacrifice. All right. Uh, now, looking ahead, uh, what do you wish to do? You always said that uh, you uh, have been running this club uh, like a football charity and there were always so many other ways to do charity. Uh, are you uh, going to uh, you know, uh, run the uh, club or what? <laughs> yeah, I think there are a lot of rumors because a yeah. lot of reporters and you know, my spectators and f I mean, fan followers called me. Uh, yeah, just to clarify that yes, Dempo Sports Club will run. We will fight the second division now and we hope that we'll come back sooner than later in the very next year. Uh, the model is going to change a little bit. And the only positive thing about getting relegated, I would say, although we are very, very disappointed, is that now I would like to focus on younger players, mm -hmm. Goan players, uh, would put more uh, resources and focus on youth development, grassroots development. I'm trying to locate somebody who takes over as a technical director of the team. So the focus could probably is to produce excellent footballers mm. who can then get into the ISL fold and the I League fold. And if it meant, you know, trading those players and selling those players, yes, it's a model. And that's where we want to generate a revenue generating model mm. because it's always been a cash loss uh, project for us. And uh, but there's no stopping from football because we are all very passionate. And this is some way that you would like to give back to Goa in return. And I think the true model would emerge if your grassroots development program is going to be a successful program. So it will give me now more room and more time and more resources because our budget uh, on the salary side will be much cut down now since we will not have foreigners and star players and all since we don't have to bid, uh, compete for the I-League. But part of that money could get into now grassroots and youth development so that we produce much better players. So uh, that uh, will come as a warm news for all the Dempo fans and football lovers in Goa. Uh, looking uh, forward now, uh, as a AIFF vice president, you must have noticed that the crowd turnout was absolutely poor and perhaps this I-League, however competitive it has been on the field, uh, should rank as one of the worst uh, season as far as the crowd turnout is concerned. Uh, do you agree with this? Uh, I was also disappointed to see myself and you know, I, w I actually expected being Tilak ground and being a Dempo yeah. Salgaonkar match, that the uh, stadium should have been full because six to seven thousand people we used to get on an average mm. for a Dempo Salgaonkar match. And if you had to see the other side of the stand, it was absolutely empty. So that's a big disappointment. And you know, however much you tried and however much you asked your fans to be there, somehow the crowd is not happening. And one needs to do a deeper introspection as to how to get back the crowds. And you know. Whether it's now sport is an entertainment and that's how you see 
uh, crowds for ISL because it's not only sport but it's sport plus you give so many other things. It's the whole ambience, it's the whole feeling, uh, you know, apart from good football it's much more. So one needs to introspect and apart from, of course, AIFF is a part but I think all of us including all the clubs should put their heads together to see whether timings, again we had said 7 o'clock but 7 o'clock also that it's the same state. Yeah. You know, then again we went back to 4.30. So really one fails to understand as to why the crowds aren't coming because do they have a choice for better sport, better entertainment? Why do they don't they flock on the grounds? But at the same time when we saw that 25,000 people were coming to the stadium mm. uh, and you know we had a match even at 4.35 one match that we had, yeah. that was also full. So really one needs to understand the psyche of uh, football lovers as to why we are not talking. But uh, at the same time we saw the crowd in Bangalore yesterday over 20,000. Even in, at uh, Kolkata at Mohan Bagan's game, the crowd has been really good but only in Goa Somehow it's a problem. In Goa I, I do agree with you. Uh, the good news is, uh, you know, with the new teams coming in into the I-League fold, there's somehow a pan-India presence now. Earlier it was heavily concentrated on Bengal and, uh, and Goa. Mm. And now slowly there's Bengaluru, there's Pune, now there's Bharat FC, you know. So this is a positive side. Mm. And the second revenue, uh, the second interesting model which is emerging is without any stars, Vyengdo is number three. Right. So that's something that one has to aspire to be, mm. is all homegrown. North people, East North East players who are so committed and who have given every team a run for their money this yes. year. So I think these are the two interesting models but however where does Goa feature in this? Is it because we are uh, three, four teams and the spectators are divided mm -hmm. but then even then you, if you can't get more than a thousand people, I mean uh, it's, a, it's a real moral uh, sort of uh, you know it's a negative morale that, you know, when the players go and they don't see any Anyone people in the Playing state. to empty galleries. Yeah. And uh, curiously, all three Goan teams have struggled and fought yes, relegation. And fought relegation, exactly. So, so, we expected people to come and support in a much better way, big, bigger way. So, yeah. this has been overall a very strange season for so many reasons. It's, it's one of the worst attended I-Leagues. Although the quality of football, if you see, has improved so much. Some of the games that were played were good, interesting, fast. Yeah. But, somehow but at the same time, you must agree that some of the games have been absolutely ordinary because I have spoken to former players like Francis Matari yeah, and yeah. Forginado Franco and they told me this is not football. So somehow, uh, you know, one is we need to evaluate uh, with the I-League and ISL, uh, where is this going to lead us? Hmm. And uh, although All India Football Federation has clarified that I-League is going to be the main hall right. of Indian football, uh, one needs to see whether ISL will be elongated more and made a bigger league and how do we accommodate all the other then there's federation so you know the season becomes so long and then whether the quality will suffer as you mm -hmm. said. So Such a lot of uh, uh, issues to handle now for AIFF. Yes. Uh, many former players have uh, thought that the players in the I-League have not uh, given their full efforts uh, trying to preserve themselves for uh, ISL. Uh, do you think this is right? I, I wouldn't agree entirely with that uh, and I don't want to name each and every player. There are players who have given up, who have given their entire effort and life to the I-League. Mm -hmm. And there are players, if I may say, I, I, again I don't want to name because it's not right. Mm -hmm. There are players who haven't demonstrated as well for the I-League uh, as well as they did for ISL. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to you know, make a strong statement like that. Mm -hmm. But generally I felt the players fought very hard and played a good game.